So this is going to be a quick study that I want you guys to think and meditate on. And the question is, am I a defensive person? I want you guys to ask yourself this. Now, you might ask, well, what's wrong with being a defensive person? Well, defensive people are extremely prideful, and pride is a deadly sin. Pride kills more people and sends more souls to hell than just about anything, because at the root of it is self-exaltation. And Proverbs 30 tells us that it is the fool that seeks to exalt self. Now, the opposite of humility is defensiveness. If someone is not able to correct you or to speak truth to you that rebukes you, it reveals a level of immaturity within you. Okay? One of the hardest things to do is to share the gospel with people that would call themselves believers but truly aren't, false professing Christians. These type of people become very defensive very quickly, and it's because their ideologies are being brought into question. Their unbiblical views that, have, that they've held to for many years, Okay, when these people are confronted and these ideas that they hold to are brought into question, these type of people get angry very quickly. And at the root of that anger is simply a rebellion against God, and it's rooted in pride. So ask yourself, Am I able to be taught, corrected, or rebuked? One of the things I've learned that has helped me mature over the years was to learn how to listen, was to learn how to be slow to respond and slow to speak, to be slow in anger and impulsiveness, and to think about what is being said to me. Okay, One of the things that I warn new Christians about is the fact that the Bible is going to rebuke. It's going to be a large, a huge rebuke to you. Okay, That first year that you read through the Bible, it's going to be an absolute huge rebuke to you. Okay. Um, and I remember the first time I read through the Bible, I was constantly, my ideas, the things that I had believed and held to for so many years were constantly being dashed left and right by the truth that I was reading about. And I remember I had to come to the place where I had to just, I, I quit fighting. And I remember I fell to my knees and I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I may not understand everything I'm reading in your word, but you know everything and I know nothing. From now on, I will believe what I read and conform my own thoughts to what I read. It was a very humbling experience, but it had to happen so that I could mature and grow. So if you are a defensive person, think about why that is and ask yourself, is being defensive helpful? Does it make me look mature? Does it make me come off as someone who's ignorant and unteachable? Okay, these are things we need to think about. What personal steps have I taken in my life to deal with pride um, because there's been a measure of success in my ministry? Um, I think it's just the, the purifying of the Word of God in my life um, and the recognition that I am not the explanation for this ministry. You will not find the explanation for God's blessing on the ministry at Grace Community Church or the ministry of Grace to You or, 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 or any other aspect of ministry that I have been engaged in. You will not find the reason for that in John MacArthur. You will find the reason for that success in the Word of God. The Word of God is not bound. The Word of God has gone forth as it always does in power. It always accomplishes that which the Lord sends it to accomplish. I will never be the explanation for the blessing God has put on this ministry. It is because he honors his Word. It is because his Word draws people to Christ and draws people to Christian godliness. It is because his word attracts people who love his word and love him. And so you have people coming all for the same love of the truth written and incarnate. So I understand all that. I know I'm not the explanation for the ministry. I know I'm not the reason. I know it is the word of God. When I first went into ministry, for whatever reason, it just seemed in my heart I had one goal, and that was to see what God would do if I did nothing but teach his word, just verse by verse through his word, and take the promise that he would bless his word and multiply it and see what he would do. It's never been about me. It's not about me now. It's always been about his word. And I think, in all honesty, when you stay in the same church for 50 years, you not only live with the joys of how the Word has worked successfully, but you also have to face your weaknesses. I can't run and hide because I'm sort of on display in this place for half a century, and my strengths and weaknesses are also on display. There's a reality in being the pastor of the same congregation. You never leave, leave town. You never escape. You never get away. 
your whole life is exposed. I think that's healthy for a pastor. I think you might believe, you know, you might believe your press report if you leave town. But if you have to live with everything in your life, good, bad, and indifferent, for half a century, you live with the reality of your strengths and weaknesses. I thank the Lord that he has brought around me, um, starting with my own wife and my own family, the people who are strong where I'm weaker, and he's done the same thing in the life of our church. So I think shepherding the same flock and living with all the, the good, the bad, and the indifferent, all the successes and all the failures, um, put you in a real world. Nothing is more real than life in the church. If, if you're just sort of a visiting speaker, or even if you, if you stand in the same pulpit or stand on the same platform every week, you walk in when the lights come up, you, you talk to the people, you walk out when the lights go down, and you're not integrated into their life, and you don't live with them for half a century, you may think you're more important than you are. But when you live with a family, with a congregation for half a century, in all the strengths and weaknesses, in all the ups and downs, you live with reality, and you're happy to honor the Lord who is the reason for the success because he's been merciful to you and blessed his word.